right, now recording that. And then we got a few people here on uh, Facebook and uh, on Instagram. So I'll flip it around on Instagram so they can see my screen for a second. And then now I'm going to uh, share the screen and go through a slide deck with you guys, teach you a little bit about photobiomodulation. All right, so. All right, well, this is the uh, infamous Apollo Cardiology logo, and many of you uh, have seen me in the office and understand the significance of this, but I am a cardiologist and heart's at the center of things, but uh, surrounding it is the sun. The sun is uh, very beneficial for health, and uh, I picked the colors red and purple because that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight. So, um, question, will this be saving my stories or highlights? Yeah, I'll try to save uh, the... Uh, uh, Instagram live to the, to the stories if I can. All right. So this is what I've been talking about recently with some people, you know, it's, we all have the same amount of time of the day. We don't have the same amount of energy and what gives you energy? It's your mitochondria, which we're going to talk about tonight and how you can use red light to kind of charge those things up. So this is just a picture of what uh, a photobiomodulation or laser therapy device looks like. I think these are probably some Juve panels. We'll go through a couple of different manufacturers tonight and talk about what they, what they all can do. But there's many benefits of red light therapy. So where do most of the uh, uh, benefits come from? It's coming from your mitochondria. So uh, the mitochondria are the organelles inside your cells that provide energy for your cells. Your heart and your brain are the two organs that have the largest amount of mitochondria. And most diseases actually start here. So some people estimate up to 80, 85% of diseases start with a misfunction or dysfunction of your mitochondria. If your power plants break down, they can't provide energy to that organ. So this is one of the things that's caused is heart failure. So in the cardiology world, heart failure is very prevalent. And it doesn't mean that your heart doesn't work. It just doesn't work as effectively. So it doesn't either squeeze very well or it doesn't relax very well. And it's because there's a lack of energy. So um, I know for some people who are looking at this, they, uh, they probably see uh, some slides on the top and they can't read what I have up there, but basically what is the main thing that uh, red light therapy does is it recharges your batteries. So it lowers inflammation, treats uh, arthritis, it lowers swelling. Uh, for people who have hypothyroidism or underactive thyroid, there is data that red light therapy can treat hypothyroidism. Um, your thyroid sits right here, it's less than a centimeter lower of the skin. And the devices that we're using here, you know, put off a lot of excessive blue light. The blue light can cause your thyroid to cause an immune response. That may be what's one of the things driving Hashimoto's or an underactive thyroid is. You can see on my left side, I have some red light. Uh, hopefully that's balancing out a little bit of the blue light coming off of this technology. But I think the major benefit of the red light therapy is that it helps with cellular energy. And if you have more energy, you usually perform better. Uh, if you injure yourself, it's lowering inflammation, it's lowering the swelling, so you can recover faster. Um, for people who have low testosterone levels, this is something that may be beneficial. Uh, there's another famous biohacker out there, Ben Greenfield, you can go you know, YouTube him and look up his uh, red light therapy uh, videos on how he improved his testosterone. You can leave that to your imagination how he used it, but may improve testosterone two to 300% uh, by using these devices. Improves your skin health by uh, simulating collagen production, so helps with wrinkles. And then for people who have hair loss issues, um, it stimulates the mitochondria in the um, roots of the hair and uh, you may regrow some hair. So there's some laser caps that people have used uh, to help with that, but you may get the same benefit with some of these red light panels. So this was a, uh, it's really hard to see who I'm showing here on Instagram, but a uh, double rainbow. Um, you know, everybody's in a rainbow hopefully once in their life and you can see the different uh, wavelengths. So you got the blues, the greens, the yellows, the oranges, the reds. Um, essentially, that's what you gotta think about when I talk about wavelengths. So uh, this is a uh, breakdown of the uh, wavelengths of visible light uh, at the top of the screen. Um, you know, there's gamma rays, x-rays, those are very short wavelengths. They pass right through you. Then before you get to the visible, there's the ultraviolet. If you listen to Dr. Cruz, he's always talking about purple light. That's what ultraviolet light is. That's what he's talking about. Then you have your visible light that your eyes can see. So, you know, you got your purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Then you get into the infrared, which is mainly heat. And then you get into the radio waves. So 
for those of us old enough to remember FM and AM radio, you know, there's different frequencies. So if you're trying to dial into a certain station, you have to dial it in directly to be able to hear that station. That's essentially what your mitochondria need. They need certain wavelengths or frequencies to be dialed into to work properly. So you can think of your mitochondria as the place that energy is made, but one of the things that may also be providing energy is the water that's surrounding the mitochondria. So water is a battery. There's a great book by Gerald Pollack called The Fourth Phase of Water. Um, essentially, when light hits water, the charge separates into positive and negative. So if you add the, uh, the anodes and the cathodes to it, you can basically um, suck out energy from that water. So this is one theory of how many of your cells are actually producing energy as they absorb sunlight and they separate the charges in the water and store that energy for later. So this is why, you know, I'm frequently talking about, you know, your skin is a solar panel, you need to be outside to charge up your cells. I won't uh, uh, punish you with this uh, uh, slide too much, but that is essentially what the inside of a mitochondria looks like. Um, there's different uh, proteins in the membrane, and then there's this little uh, blue thing over here. I can't show you with uh, the one slide, but uh, the blue thing is essentially something called the ATPase. It's like a top. The faster that it spins, the more energy gets pumped out. So typically when you eat food, this is why you don't see me talking too much about food, uh, other than what it gets broken down to ultimately is these protons, the positives, and the electrons and negatives. The negatives, the electrons are passed through this electron chain, go to that top, the top spins, the faster it spins, the more energy pops out the other side but you can stimulate these proteins in that ATPS at top by putting in red light, especially in the, uh, the mid 600 uh, nanometer range that gets that top spinning faster without you having to put food into the system. So there are different wavelengths of red light, you know, as I showed you on that previous slide, you know, typically, you know, most of the red light is in the 600 nanometer to 700 nanometer range. And again, it's like a radio station, you have to dial in directly to get the, to get the effect. So you do need to kind of look at the labels if you're going to buy one of these devices to know exactly what you're going to be able to do with it. So you need to know what the wavelengths are. So um, the one device that I uh, typically use, and that's what's shining on me right now, this is the EMR tech, and I'll do a, a demo of all these things uh, when I'm done uh, showing you the slide deck. But this uh, one I got to my left has 630, 670, and 830 nanometers. And then the other thing you need to know is the power density. Um, basically the photons, the energy that's coming off of the device, how intense is it? That's measured in something called the milliwatts per centimeter squared, or it's also known as the irradiance. Um, you have to go to the manufacturer's websites to get these numbers. Um, yeah, I pulled them off of the website tonight for a BMR tech, you know, at a distance of basically 20 centimeters, I'm sorry, 20 inches, it's 52 milliwatts per centimeter squared, which is very high. There's another company that I have some of their strips, um, you know, theirs is down into like the three um, milliwatts per centimeter squared at 12 inches. But by being a lower irradiance, you can actually put those things right on your body. When they're these higher irradiance, it may put off some more heat. And you can't get as close to these things. So it's actually a, um, it's a physics thing is what I'll show you on the, on the next slide. But then there's also the adequate dose. And, you know, people always ask, well, how much of this, you know, red light should you use, how often, um, you know, once or twice a day maybe to whatever affected area. So if you want to treat your hair and skin, you know, 15, 20 minutes to those areas, you want to treat your thyroid, 20 minutes, your heart, you know, 20 minutes to an hour, you know, it typically um, depends on what your treatment goals are, but an ideal dose sometimes is between four and 10 joules per centimeter squared. There's a calculator on the Gimba Red website. You basically, if you don't have a Gimba Red, you basically put in the uh, radiance of the device. So you gotta get that from the manufacturer or whatever device you have, and then what dose you want, and then it'll tell you how many minutes to stand in front of the thing. This is just their, their slide that has that, you know, if you basically are hugging the thing, you know, what the radiance is, if you're six inches away, the power uh, decreases. And then you, this is basically the four, six, 10 or 20 joules per centimeter square tells you you may need only 10 minutes or you may need up to an hour. So um, down the, the bottom of the screen, uh, for those that can actually see it. So first you can basically figure out what uh, uh, dose you want, and then you can plug it into this calculation. It'll tell you how many minutes to, uh, to stand in front of the device. 
Uh, this is a slide that shows you what the different frequencies, how deep they penetrate into your skin. You know, before when I showed you like the gamma rays and X rays, those pass right through you. But once you start getting into the, like the purple, the UV, the blue, those don't penetrate very deeply. They're just going through like the top layer of the skin. But the red gets down pretty deep. You know, it gets in three centimeters or deeper. So it gets into the muscles. It can treat the blood vessels. So when you're outside in the sun and your skin turns pink, that's your blood vessels coming to the surface and the light is basically irradiating the blood, and that's why your skin is pink. And then when you wake up in the morning, your skin isn't nearly as pink. Um, this was a slide from the people that, the lab device I'm using. I told them this one fun fact I picked up somewhere along the way, that your heart is essentially one third mitochondria by weight. So if you stand in front of one of these panels, you probably are charging up the mitochondria in the heart. Now there's data in Russia on this, um, especially with some intravenous lasers, which we'll show uh, coming up later. But you know, if you have a weak heart, this is a adjuvant that you may want to use. I'm always going to recommend that you use the sun first. You know, these are sun supplements. You can use these things, but um, you know, use Mother Nature first. Uh, this is the laser watch, and I do have it uh, sitting here tonight uh, for those that want to see it live sometime, and you know, I can talk about it if you want. Um, but this is made by a Weber. Um, it essentially has two uh, panels of lights, it has red, but then it has yellow, green, and also blue. Uh, it goes over your radial and ulnar artery, which are right at your wrist where you would take your pulse. And this sits right on your surface of your skin so it can actually penetrate. Remember I showed you that slide that the blue light really doesn't penetrate very much. So if you're shining blue light onto your skin, it's not gonna get into it. So, you know, you heard me earlier talking about like, well, the blue light from technology isn't good for you. That's typically, it's again, it's a dosage thing. You know, from your technology, it's four to five times as intense. In certain wavelengths of blue light, there is some benefit with nitric oxide, things that can help dilate your blood. So not all blue light's bad. If blue light's balanced with the red, so I would only use the blue light if the red light was turned on in this device. Um, typically the way that this device would be used is typically about 30 minutes, uh, once or twice a day. Um, and then you can dial in if you want, red and yellow, red and blue, red and green, or all four, and then uh, the power. So um, this device also has a couple of attachments. It has a um, ear probe that only shines red light, can help with tinnitus or ringing in the ears. There's one that goes up your nose, uh, can treat sinus infections. Um, and then there's like a little pad um, that you can then put on whatever herbs and it lights it up, but it's only red. Um, this was a article I pulled um, that uh, the, um, what is the World Anti-Doping Association um, basically does classify intravenous lasers as doping. Uh, a year or so ago, uh, three people in the uh, Romanian handball team got uh, dinged for using IV lasers. Um, this is you know, speculation that this has been going on uh, in uh, the Olympics for many years. You know, athletes are always trying to find a competitive advantage. Um, and IV lasers would be very hard to uh, um, pick up on unless you have like needle tracks or something like that. But um, so if you're a professional athlete, I do not recommend this. But if you're a biohacker or uh, somebody who um, is actually chronically sick, so you have a weak heart, so the mitochondria in your heart don't work well. You have an autoimmune condition, so your immune system doesn't work well. Or you have cancer, since you another thing, your immune system didn't work well to clear the cancer. Intravenous lasers may have some benefit for you. So you can see that this was a red laser that I was using. Um, you know, the treatments would probably be you know, two or three times a week for 20 minutes for each uh, laser. So you'd have an IV, there's a fiber optic cable that goes in through the IV and then shines the light directly into your blood system. Remember earlier I talked about that the, you know, the blood has basically a lot of water in it and then the um, red light would charge up the water and then that charge up energy is going back to your heart to get pumped around to the system that needs it. So, so if you're chronically ill, um, this is something to consider. If you're a healthy person, uh, there's not a great need for you to go out and rush to do this. So that's all I have for a slide deck tonight. And I'll do a kind of a demo of some of the devices I have and then answer any questions you guys have. Um, I do thank you for uh, watching the slide deck part, but you know, uh, keep investing in your health. Um, and if you don't already follow me on Instagram or on LinkedIn, those are two places I'm most active. If you want to know more about the biohacking stuff, it's mostly on uh, Instagram. Um, I think I'm four or five people away from having 500 organic followers and not bought any robots or anything like that. So uh, if you don't follow me, please uh, give me a follow on Instagram. 
Um, I'm trying to do a lot more Instagram stories, usually trying to answer any questions that they, that people either send me through Instagram or email and or get asked in the office. You know, and I think it's a good question that more people want to know about. I'll put it in my Instagram stories for the day. So I'm going to stop my uh, screen share here for a moment and then uh, answer any questions people have. Actually, let me see if there's any questions first and then I'll uh, do the, uh, uh, the demo of the things I got. So, um, so, so far, no questions over here. And then on Instagram, um, I've been wanting to find a way to set it up so I can use it while laying down, doing yoga poses while shining down on my chest instead of sitting for an hour a day. Yeah, that's great. I mean, there are um, different ways you can get these panels to hang on uh, ceilings or walls. Um, or like I said, I got this yeah, rubber laser uh, watch. You know, you can wear this and walk around the house. So let me, uh, yeah, I'll hold it like this for now. So I'll just show you the device that I use more, most often. This is the EMR tech. It has two different uh, settings. So it has these outer rings. Uh, these bulbs are not burnt out. These are, um, let's see, people on this side can't see it so much, but I don't have really a long cable for this one. So, All right, so that's gonna be pretty bright, but essentially the, uh, The red lights are putting out the uh, 630, 670 nanometers, and the ones that you can't see are the infrared 830 nanometers. So if you had a, you know, night vision goggles or something like that, you'd see those things are actually lit up. And then there's a big central bulb. The central bulb um, puts out a lot of uh, power <laughs> of front light. So it actually has a cooling fan, and I'll probably start really worrying when I can fire that up. So um, I don't usually uh, use this one for more than a few minutes if I have the, uh, the central one on, but at nighttime, you can uh, set it up where this can just be task light in your house then. So you don't have to have any overhead lights or anything like that. This can uh, serve as your uh, evening light if you like. And if you are interested in these things, I do have an affiliate link. Um, you know, you don't pay any more money if you buy through them that way, but I uh, uh, would appreciate if you want to order it, I'll, I'll send you the information. Um, a Weber laser uh, watch, um, you know, has the uh, kind of the two settings that you can put on there. Um, yeah, you know, this is, I can tell you, it's not a, not a cheap toy. Um, you know, it was, you know, over a thousand bucks to get one of these things. Um, but, you know, if you are really sick or you really want to uh, try to do some uh, biohacking, this thing is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Um, and then I do have a um, Juve, what's this called? The Juve Go. I got this right when this came out. So the Juve Go is um, portable. It has a lithium battery that you can charge up. Um, you can theoretically travel with this one. I haven't yet tried to get it past the uh, security because I don't know if they know what it would be. Um, but this would be decent because um, you can hold it up, you know, treat face, treat hair. You know, if you have your knee hurts, you can just hold it right over your knee. So um, the one I would say challenge with the Jews is that they're fairly pricey for what they are. Um, so I hard to, to recommend them. Uh, compared to some of the other manufacturers uh, you know they, they make a good product but there is still some concern that they they flicker too much so while you're looking at it you might not be able to see it but the lights are turning on and off many times a second you can kind of biohack that by using your phone and uh, doing a slow motion and then just shine it on there and then if you then replay it and see it flickering then your mitochondria is seeing that flickering so i know the emr tech has data that it doesn't flicker much and i follow some people that have to you know, have different meters and look through it. So I pretty much trust that one. Um, yeah, before I got into these devices, I had one of these ones. Um, this is the, it's upside down, sorry. This is the Rejuvenator. Um, it works decent, but this would be the only one that I would hang up and stand back from because this one puts out a lot of electromagnetic frequencies. So I used to use this one before I knew better, you know, holding it like this or putting it right on your head, uh, but there's too much, you know, basically dirty electricity coming off this one for you to be too close to it. So I rarely would use this one. Now I'm using it more as task lighting in the, in the house. But I got this one, this initial one, like three years ago before all these other companies came out. With them. So it's a good thing, but there's better uh, manufacturers now, at least in my opinion. So um, that's the, uh, the, uh, the demos. Um, so now let's uh, open it up to a Q&A. So. All right, 
And I got one in here. Uh, we travel with the red light man spot lamp. Yep, that's awesome. Yeah, I would say one careful thing that I see on some of these devices that, you know, it depends on where you hold the thing. Um, you know, they're usually pretty insulated, but you know, where the wire is coming into those, and if you're actually holding it, you might get a high dose of EMFs off of it. So um, I know the person asking this question, so um, I can help them sometime with it, but um, you know, the quick spot way I always can show you guys is test on gas. You know, there's a um, EMF meter that I typically use. This is the ENV RD10. You know, send me a message if you want more info about it. And I'll probably do a talk some night on just EMFs. I've done it before, but uh, a lot of people start following me since the last time I did it. So, um, but this is pretty straightforward. Test radio frequencies, magnetic frequencies, and uh, um, energy, uh, electrical fields. And so basically just hold the meter near whatever device you're using and whatever, you know, if it's pegging red, which it's gonna peg red because it's right near my phone, which has you know, Wi-Fi, and, you know, 4G and stuff like that. So. Um, so I personally wouldn't uh, keep something close to me that is pegged red. So, you know, um, you know, right now I'm holding it near my EMR tech and it's, uh, you know, low yellow. So I'm usually not very close to that thing. So, you know, standing away from it, it's not high. Uh, here's a question. Um, so what is the brand you're currently using? It's uh, called EMR tech. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the, uh, the comments here. All right, do we have any questions coming off of Zoom tonight? And if no questions, do we have any suggestions or topics that you guys want to hear about next time? <laughs> yes, maybe I'll do that next time. Uh, Getting a question about uh, saunas. So yes, there are some benefits of saunas. You know, I get a lot of questions about you know near, mid, far infrared. Um, I tell you, I'm not an expert on you know which wavelengths of infrared is absolutely beneficial. They all are. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do one on on saunas here. Maybe we'll have a giveaway about the, the saunas. Um, question, how far away should you be from the light? I talked about that earlier in the uh, talk. It depends on what the irradiance of the, uh, the device is, is how far away you should be for it. Um, the further you're away from it, the longer you're gonna have to stand in front of it if you wanna get the uh, therapeutic four to 10 uh, joules per centimeter squared dosage. So, um, you know, and then it really depends on what device you have. You know, if it has high electromagnetic frequencies, you don't wanna be hugging the thing. Uh, you're probably gonna be at least six inches away from it. And the effect starts going down the further away from it. So, um, so it is complicated. It is literally physics. Uh, so you need to look at the distance that you were from it and figure out what dose that you wanted, and you can kind of calculate that. Uh, question. Good question. Um, it does not. The question is: Does the red light count towards I use on a D minder app? So again, it goes back to the wavelengths. So red light is on the other side of the spectrum. Purple light or UV light is on the other spectrum. So it's the UVB radiation that boosts up vitamin D. So it's like a FM station, you know, if you're dialing to 95, you know, you know or vacation 95 or 105 points on the point, they're just on different spectrums. You have to dial in exactly to get the radio station. So um, it's the UVB radiation that raises your uh, vitamin D level. Oh, no worries. I'm uh, saving the, somebody's asking that they had a question about the, the distance. Um, yeah, I will try to save the Instagram live into my stories and I am recording this. So I'll probably put stuff on my Facebook page too.
podcast. Well, there's no more questions. We'll start winding it down. So I do thank you guys for joining me every Monday night, uh, 6 p.m. Um, I will have a uh, recording of this put up on my Facebook page you know, by tonight. Um, next week, probably talk about saunas and maybe uh, throw in some EMF you know, mitigation techniques as well. Uh, and then reminder for those that uh, don't get the emails, uh, I am going to be launching kind of a VIP membership program uh, later this month. I'm going to be doing a webinar May 22nd, it's Friday, and it's going to be at noon. Um, I have an event by page that has free registration for it. So if you were interested in that, just uh, uh, hit me up on that. Make sure you get a link on that. But I do thank you guys for your attention for this. Um, do you got one more question coming in? Um, what do you recommend for sunlight on rainy days with red light? Um, so rainy days are red light days. So no matter what, uh, from sun up to sundown, red light and infrared is about 42% of the light that hits the earth. So when it's really cloudy out, the UV, which is shorter, basically is bouncing off the clouds and it's not getting into uh, the atmosphere and getting down to the earth where you're standing. Um, so on days where it's really cloudy, it's basically like a sauna. It's a red light day. So you're still getting the benefits if it's cloudy out. You won't be able to boost up your vitamin D that much that day, but you just build it up on the other days when it's not uh, cloudy. And again, you know, you can always use your red light boxes as uh, sun plements. So, you know, make sure you're using the regular sun, you know, seeing the morning sunrise, checking in a couple times a day. And then uh, ideally, you know, sunset is probably the biggest uh, boost of red light um, when you need to uh, kind of repair any damage you've done through the day. If you see the sunset with your skin exposed, it's basically like having a red light box naturally. All right, guys. Well, great questions. Thanks for joining tonight, and uh, we'll see you again next week.